Well, um, Bismarck is beating up on Bay Area. Um, like Bismarck has scored, what, 60 points? Uh, so we're going to do this week in the North football right now. And right now in the IFL, things are looking kind of good. You know, you still got Arizona dominating the West. It's still, you know, kind of up in the air there. Um, EJ Hilliard's back for Quad City. I thought that was going to help them immensely against Frisco, but that was not the case. Frisco was able to beat Quad City. And then, you know, the upset of the season so far happened when Green Bay finally got their first victory against Massachusetts. Huge victory there for Green Bay. That is probably one of the best upsets in the IFL in quite some time. It's not the best, but it's one of the best in quite some time. But there's been some things around the IFL that have been circulating, um, you know, from our good friend Love of FB over on Arena Fan um, has been stirring up the pot, and we know there's been some things that have been going on, you know, when it comes to you know the Vegas Nighthawks. The Vegas Nighthawks, you know, had a couple of NHL owners at one of their games recently. I forget which one it was. There's the talk of future United Bulls coming to Vegas, which I'm kind of against that. You know, there's also the talk of a couple new teams. One of which is Coachella Valley. Now, we don't know if that's confirmed yet or not. So, that that's a team that's rumored. It could come, you know, anytime soon. But if not, who knows? There could be a Nashville team as well. There, there was something, you know, about a Nashville team coming to the IFL, which helps out, you know, Columbus. Or I, I, I use that in quotations here because we don't know if the Columbus Wild Dogs are even going to play in 2023. And you know, they're they're. I, I, I got it. I got it mixed up. There might have been like three NHL owners there, but there might have been five. So I'm not sure how many exactly were there, but the NHL partnerships with IFL teams have been working wonders so far. Um, you know, Frisco's affiliated with you know the Dallas Stars and everything, and Vegas is affiliated with the Henderson Knights and the, and the Vegas Golden Knights. So you know that that could be that could be interesting we'll see how all this goes down the road but for right now i'm just gonna you know chuckle that into the rumor bin for you know for future reference until until we get some confirmation on those two on those at least two to three new teams the ifl which would bring the ifl at this time without the factions you know from 15 with 14 playing to like 17 or 18 teams which is you know not the pace i want the ifl to go i've said this in the past but it is what it is next up is the nal nal will start this weekend it will start this you know this saturday three games on saturday it's going to be a huge time and albany has signed on through 2024 which will ensure that the nal will be alive in 2024 they're I'm not sure why people continue to roll with the whole, you know, the NAL will die joke, you know, and it, it's kind of funny that people still do so. Um, you know, we're probably going to joke about it in the, in the chats, I guarantee you that at some point. And, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people have been kind of iffy, you know, I talked to one of the Inside the Walls guys, and I'm Mr. Jim. I hope I'm, I can't even say his last name, but I, I know it's Jim from Inside the Walls, who I talked to last night. You know, it was a, it was a great three-hour conversation we had last night, and, um, you know, we were talking a lot, you know, about different stuff, but the NAL came up a lot. Um, hoping for a good season from the NAL. We've been, we, we here at Big Boy Sports and throughout the rest of the guys that cover Indoor and arena football have been excited by the by the pace and by the good things that the IFL's done so far this year. But we're ready for the NAL too. We got we got to get everybody up in here. Everybody is ready for the final league to kick off because the NAL is the last league to get their season underway. So you know, let's hope for a good season again. I picked Columbus to win it all this year, so it's probably going to be wrong. 
Um, who knows? But we'll see. You know, NAL is going to be at least here through 2024. At least we know Jacksonville is still going to be here. We know Columbus is still going to be here. We know Carolina is still going to be here. Maybe Orlando and Albany again. They are secure through 2024. The one wild card is San Antonio, though. Um, that that's the one wild card that me and Jim discussed a lot Sunday night with San Antonio. We'll see how they do. You know, this season. But you know, if they don't do well, that's you know. It is what it is. Um, the FCF. Let's get to it. Oh, dear Lord. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I do not know where the FCF has come from with this. You know, they, they took in the Terrell, the Terrell Owens publicity and they ran with it. And, you know, I... Upset here, and you know, watched a little bit of their game. I watched a little bit of their um, their Saturday games, their early Saturday games, because they put on four games each Saturday night inside that little arena they got out in Atlanta. And the arena, you know, again, it doesn't look like there's a lot of fans in there. It hardly looks like it's you can see fans in there because I mean, the, the product when you look at it from like a fan's perspective. You know, it lo it looks it looks so weird. It doesn't look like a fan could experience these games. And then you know the quality of play is just disgustingly slow. Still, I mean Johnny Mansell didn't even show up, despite the fact that you know he's been advertised immensely. And then the FCF tried to dunk on the USFL. I do not know where they think they are. Where do you think you are to try and dunk on the USFL? You're not in that place. I even said it. I even called them out for it on Twitter. They're not, they're not going to answer me, though. They're not going to answer me because I mean, I know I know fickle when I see it. It's too much of a gimmick for the FCF to be trying to do all this nonsense. You know, they they're getting all the publicity and all the and all the stuff for you know a game that you know that rightfully so most people are making fun of, um, including myself because I mean it's just that it's just that bad like. People are just completely surprised and blindsided that Terrell Owens is even back, you know, playing football. And it's just it's just rough, man. It's just rough. Like, this is disgusting. Like the FCF gotta get it together. Y'all gotta get it together. And you know, you got you got the Twitch thing, you got the NBC deal, which is not even an MB, a main NBC channel. It's like a, a lower tier NBC channel. Remember that. Um, it, it, it's, it's just, you know, like you're trying to capitalize off the USFL's bad publicity. You got bad publicity of your own, courtesy of everybody who knows what you truly are. Um, people that actually follow the indoor and arena game who know what you truly are. So, fan control football. Hope you guys have a great season. You got a seven week regular season plus the playoffs. And, you know, hope, hopefully. The season ends well, but you know, there's there's going to be a lot here that needs to be taken in to account for the FCF. All right, let's move on lower. We got to go lower here. We got to go to the tier three leagues and stuff like that. We got to go to them. So let's talk about the Arena Pro Football League here, and unfortunately for you know the two team league, Charlotte has you know released a schedule once again. They released another schedule. They have another game with the Carolina Predators. They've added a second game with, you know, a second home game. They have the APFL Championship. And I use that in quotations. Scheduled for June 25th. Um, so Charlotte will have, you know, they're playing West Michigan this week, who changed their home game against Charlotte to Central Illinois. And, you know, Charlotte only has one road game the entire season. They've already played that, and they lost that game. And, you know, we again, me and Jim were talking about, you know, and everybody else, you know, we were, we were talking about, you know, how West Michigan's kind of just stranded here because, I mean, they got, um, if you've seen their, um, they, they uploaded their games to YouTube, and, and, you know, West Michigan just has a top-notch production. It's just sad to see that they are stuck in a league that, is not really a league with two teams and it's it's just kind of sad 
you know, hopefully the APFL championship and the APFL in general will improve upon itself because they're one of the three splinters from the AL, you know, in part, you know, not all the way because one of them is, you know, a split from the CIF. We'll talk about that one last because I got I, I to tear, you know, that league a new one. Uh, but the APFL, hoping for a successful season there and we'll see if anything else changes. You know, because I found out that Charlotte changed their schedule through Twitter of all places, and I'm sitting here like, "What do you What do you mean?" I was just looking up Arena Football, and what and I'm sitting here like, "What do you mean Charlotte changed their schedule again? Why?" Okay, whatever. In the NIF, the National Indoor Football League, um, you know, uh, the Chicago Power have a new arena, the David S. Palmer Arena. Um, they played, what, three or four games so far, and, you know, the power, you know, again, they split off from the AL and went to this league. We all know the story around the NIF at this point. They've been losing teams left and right, but for right now, it seems like things are going all right. You know, things have been going all right. In the AIFA and the AWFC, because we'll group these two together, because um, Las Vegas... Remember, the AWFC and AIFA have a scheduling agreement, so the Vegas Kings will go up to Idaho to take on the Horsemen in a filler game on April the 30th. That's next weekend, or the weekend after this one. And it's it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. You know, we'll see if Las Vegas even makes the trip. We'll see if Idaho, you know, plays well, because uh, I believe... AWFC streams their games on Facebook. Um, the big issue here is that the AIFA still has not released a full league schedule. You know, only Mississippi, only the Mississippi Raiders have a schedule released. They have an additional six game schedule. Five games are in league games. There's a non league game in there, and that is running apparently from April 23rd to June 18th. So that should be the time frame. That the AIFA will complete their season, in my opinion, but who knows? Um, there could be additional games added. I haven't checked. I checked every other team's website. I checked the AIFA website. Nothing. So it, it's go time, guys. Your season, your season has already started technically, and you know one of your teams it has already released the schedule. Like one of your one of your teams has released the schedule, and you, the league, have not. So, you know, I want to talk about black excellence and whatnot, like, uh, from the black man to, you know, a league that's been mostly black ran, get this together right now. It's disgusting to see, you know, how one team has the schedule out and the others do not. You know, there's some disconnect there. There's got to be, there's got to be something because that website still hasn't been updated. It has not been updated since the kickoff classic. Last but not least, we got we got to tear the AFA a new one because my God, the Arena Football Association, what a disaster this first weekend was for them. Just an absolutely disastrous display of football. What kind of opener do you have me looking at here? Um, shout out to um, Justin um, Kelm, I think, um, from Facebook, who got a lot of that footage. For North Texas and Magnolia State. The game was delayed at the start. The turf had numerous problems. We're talking it's coming off and it's getting guys injured. That's, you know, we know indoor football turf, arena football turf, you know, can injure you. But this is the most unsafe turf I've seen in quite some time. Like, this is literally not supposed to be played on. You can't have the field going up like that. That's, that's, that's not even cool. You got these small little plastic boards on the sidelines, no scoreboard, and I, I get it, you know, it is what it is, you know, the arenas and stuff like that, that's the same thing that's, you know, wrong with West Texas, their arena doesn't have a working scoreboard, you know, like, there's no field goal post, there's no time, no down marker, uh, the arena was, you know, it's so big, it looked pretty big for North Texas, and that arena looked even emptier than the USFL game, you know, from tonight, 
and the announcer, the announcer for this game on Flow Sports, and remember, Flow Sports is trash. The announcer just left during the game. He was like, yo, I gotta go to work tomorrow. And he just left. He bounced. He was like, deuces, everybody. I'll see you. I'll see you next time. It, it's sad. It's really, really sad how this is, you know, how this is being, you know, how this is being treated. Because, I mean, this is, these are two teams that said, you know, Hey, we are we are we are something else. We're going to be different. We're we're going to be a different league. And you're a disaster. You're again. You guys are also splinters from the AAL. You know, maybe maybe the AAL guys were right. You know, maybe do maybe do Con's interview with the AAL guys was completely right. So I mean, man, I'm sitting here just absolutely perplexed at at this nonsense here. The Texas Jets, meanwhile, they played. They don't have a website. It still doesn't work. Why does it not work? Somebody tell me this. Like I continue to try and go and see if it works. Like their Facebook's all right, you know. They're they're getting contacted by guys and stuff like that on Facebook, but their actual website, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, it's not working. And speaking of things, you know that you know are working. I don't know how West Texas has Salinas over turf. They have their old turf. Remember how Salina has the Philadelphia Soul turf? Yes, yeah, Salina's turf is in West Texas now. Which is, you know, both good and both bad because, again, West Texas split off from the CIF. You know, at least Amarillo decided, you know, we're, we're, we're done with this nonsense. This looks kind of bad. And, you know, they just kind of quietly, you know, was like deuces. I'll see y'all another time. You know, I hope I hope Amarillo is all right. You know, I hope the Benham actually still exists. But if not, you know, that'd be pretty sad. Uh, but in, in any case, in any case, that's it for this week in North football. Uh, I'm not sure if Bismarck Bay Area went final yet. But again, Bay Area is not that good. Same with San Diego. I mean, the West Division of the IFL is not that great aside from Arizona. In all honesty, and um, yeah. Let, let's enjoy this week, you know, as, you know, we got a we got a nice smorgasbord of football starting Friday night, ending on a, what, a Sunday? Yeah, a Sunday, yeah. yeah it's it's going to be a beautiful next, it's going to be a beautiful weekend, you know, starting 7 p.m. Friday night, ending up, you know, at 3 o'clock or ish, like about, about like after 3 o'clock um, Sunday. You know, it'll be like five or six o'clock when the madness of the indoor arena game stops. So, come on back. I'll see you next Sunday for this week in indoor football. And until then, Big Boy Sports signing out. See you soon. <laughs>